Will the Broncos' head coach search impact Giro Evro's future with the organization? Could the next head coach keep him on staff if Evro does not get a head coaching job? You get that and much more. Today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day, you can get this podcast free and available everywhere you get your podcasts in audio format, or you can watch us on YouTube. Do us a favor. If you want daily Denver Broncos news content coverage, hit that subscribe or that follow button down below if you have not done so already so you never miss out on a day's worth of action because for the true fan, there is never an off season. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by my co host, Sarah Bettinger, Psy Expert, predominantly orange.com. Sarah, obviously, as we still await the Broncos to announce their next head coach, whoever it may be, I feel like there's an important discussion that we need to have about the Broncos defense, about defensive coordinator Ajiro Evro, who's also interviewed for some head coaching jobs. As we found out over the weekend, he will not be in consideration for the Broncos' head coaching gig, but he still is the defensive coordinator until he decides to accept the job if offered from another NFL team. That's right, and it makes you wonder, will the Broncos, after you know, not, not necessarily letting him interview with every other team, I think obviously he's going to get those opportunities, and you, wanna, you want him to take those opportunities. It's an opportunity to really advance his career, but if they're letting him interview and interview a second time with a number of teams, Cody, could they let him make a lateral move, depending on who they hire as the head coach? And I think that's kind of part of what we're talking about today. I think you and I would both agree, though, it would be wise to keep Ejiro Evero on the staff. And for a variety of reasons, I think first and foremost, this guy's a very good coach, right? He, he proved coming over from the Los Angeles Rams, working under Sean McVay and Raheem Morris. Like it, the Broncos defense was pretty consistent all year, weren't they? They were good most of the year. They found ways like he talked about in his introductory press conference, right? If we're not getting there with four, we're going to bring five. And the Broncos did. They they brought pressure all throughout the year, and it resulted in a lot of turnovers down the stretch in the season being caused by that unit. So there's there was so much good from Ejiro Evero, and I know we're going to talk more and more about that. But I think first and foremost, what we need to discuss is, is it a deal breaker, so to speak, when you're talking about all these different stipulations, right, that could be in this head coaching search you're talking about Russell Wilson and and whether or not him being fixed is part of the equation or if it's a requirement for the next coach. Could Ezero Evro staying on staff be something that the Broncos ownership group and the, are they saying that do, to, to prospective candidates? Are they saying, hey, we want to keep this guy around after what we saw last year? And, you know, I, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they were. But what's your take on that, Cody? I think that that, that maybe, maybe there's something to that. To my knowledge, I know that has been something that has been floated out in some of the interviews. They have brought up to prospective head coaching candidates about, you know, what is your plan with the defense? And, you know, if Giro Evro doesn't get a head coaching job, would he be somebody that is considered to stay on? To, to my understanding, I believe that would be a strong encouragement because – Here's the deal. You talk to Broncos players, they love Giro Evro. I mean, they love his scheme. I mean, Josie Jewell said this is the most fun he's ever had playing in a defensive scheme throughout his entire career, which I know for you he even dates back to the Hawkeyes when he was playing there at, at college. He, you know, he said he's having more fun in this system right now. Giro Evro relates really well with the guys. He gets to know their families, but more importantly, they also say guys like Josie Jewell, DJ Jones, Justin Simmons, those guys have told me firsthand in the locker room that a Giro Evro flips the switch on game days. He's locked in, but he's collaborative as a coach, and we've seen how the Broncos' defense has played. Sarah, I, I think it, it's not an exaggeration when we can both say and we can look at it, realistically speaking, that the Broncos under Vic Fangio defensively were really Really good. They're one of the top defenses in the league. It's crazy to think that Azure Ever was able to come in as a first year defensive coordinator and make that defense even better. I mean, he took Fangio's defense, and as you mentioned, he added more pressure elements to it, and it created buy in from every single player. And I, I tell you, I think that's super important, especially when you talk about the fact that the Broncos 
despite you know the last seven years of change, 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 you have a chance now to establish continuity, at least on one side of the ball. Now, granted, guys leave, coaches leave for promotions all the time, and if Ajiro ever gets a head coaching gig, he deserves it 110%. But if he doesn't get a head coaching gig this year, you have to keep that unit solidified. You have to keep that unit together. Now, I think there's some other things that we also have to talk about. With how things went in Denver last year, obviously Nathaniel Hackett brought Evero over to be the D.C. We've talked about it on the show, how close those guys were as friends in real life. How things ended for Hackett in Denver, I mean, I, I think it's fair to ask this question. Do you think that could impact whether or not Evero wants to stay in Denver for any reason, whether it be as a potential head coach, which obviously we know that ship has kind of sailed, or as a defensive coordinator? I mean, I think it has to be at least asked, right? It has to be part of the discussion because we already know for a fact that he turned down the interim head coach position in part because of his relationship with Nathaniel Hackett, just out of respect for his good friend, best man at each other's wedding type friends, right? This is not just like a, hey, we're buddies from college who kind of came up in the NFL together. No, these guys are like best friends. So you can't help but wonder, Cody, if there is something to that and you have to also hope at this point, right? The the Houston Texans job, which we'll talk more about later in terms of just the rumors and things going around about what could impact the Broncos. But at, let's just say without giving anything away about later segments, it seems like the Indianapolis Colts job may be the only job that is zero ever could realistically land at this point based on other things that are coming out right now. So if he doesn't get that job, that's where I think maybe this lateral move conversation comes into play because wasn't it the Atlanta Falcons try to reach out to the Broncos to get an interview with Ijiro to be their defensive coordinator or, or some it was some other team who was it, it was the it. Falcons Broncos, yeah the Falcons yeah so the Broncos declined that of course and, and understandably so but all is going to depend on who the team hires as the next head coach what their plan is as defensive coordinator remember if Sean Payton is coming back to the coaching ranks, it was re reported by Adam Schefter a while back that Vic Fangio was his top pick. Well, Fangio is apparently going to be with the Miami Dolphins, or maybe, maybe not. There's so many conflicting reports about everything these days. But, Cody, I just feel like if Ezero Evero doesn't get a head coaching gig initially, my feeling was he's for sure coming back to Denver. Now, I just I don't know. I feel like the team may let him go to a lateral move with a couple of job openings available, including some connections over there uh, in Minnesota. And it's going to be very interesting to see how everything plays out here for the Broncos as the head coach search continues on this week. No news yet on the front of who will be the next Broncos head coach, but we'll have you covered here on the Lockdown Broncos every step of the way the moment it happens. You'll have instant reaction on a breaking news podcast of the show. Let us know your thoughts on Ajiro Evero. If you're watching on YouTube down below, make sure you like this video as well. Comment for the algorithm. Make sure if you want to share your thoughts with us on Twitter, you can always tweet us at Cody Work NFL at Sarah Bettinger at Lockdown Broncos. On today's episode of the show, we're going to dive deeper into the realms of Ajiro Evero. If the Broncos hire a brand new head coach, would it be wise for that head coach to keep Evero on staff? We talk about why that is important, and you'll get that on today's episode. Lockdown Broncos, this episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at Blue Nile, and Valentine's Day is coming up, which means romance is in the air more than usual. And I don't need to tell all you lovebirds that you've probably had your date plans on the calendar for weeks, but have you found the perfect Valentine's Day gift yet? Whether you're celebrating this day of romance or whether you're ready to pop the question, you could find jewelry as unique as she is with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. At BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for life's special moments or even create the custom engagement ring of her dreams. Their simple online tools tell you to choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. And Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft the perfect piece to your specifications. And Blue Nile's diamond price guarantee allows you to compare a competitor's diamond against one of theirs. Blue Nile can even meet or beat their price. Every order is insured and arrives quickly in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shipping is free, and so are returns. Right now, you can save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com for up to 50% off BlueNile.com. For the next Broncos head coach, would it be wise for them to keep Ajiro Evero on staff as their defensive coordinator, and could they make that appeal outside of how good the Broncos defense has been, but for other reasons like player development? Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day you can get this podcast free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format, or you can watch us on YouTube. Sarah, 
let's continue on with this discussion here because we, we talked about why Ejiro Evro is important to the Broncos defensively from the operation standpoint, right, of, of getting the best out of the defensive personnel and, and really, I think, doing a really good job last year with all the injuries that impacted Denver. There were different guys stepping up, and, and other guys were plugging and playing into the Broncos' defensive scheme, which, I mean, I think any good defensive coordinator builds the scheme around what players do best, and that was the case with Evro. But there's some other intangibles behind the scenes that I think make bringing Ejiro Evro back a top priority for the next Broncos head coach. Well, there are. I mean, there's different things from, like you mentioned, player development, the the scheme that he runs with the personnel that you have. But I think you got to start by talking about the fact that right now in the NFL, there is a rule that if some team hires your, you know, one of your coordinators or somebody in your front office to be their head coach or general manager, and they are a minority candidate, if that person has been with your organization for two years, then you can get multiple third round compensatory picks. So what does that mean for a zero Evero and the Broncos? Well, it means that if, like we talked about in segment one, if the Broncos lose him to another team that wants to hire him as head coach this year, the Broncos get nothing in return. They get no compensatory picks. And, and that would kind of, you know, that would, that, that would hurt a little bit, right? I mean, it would stink to see because you feel like he's on a fast track to being an NFL head coach. And if you've got him on the staff, it, I mean, if the NFL is going to have this rule in place, you might as well be able to take advantage of it, right? So it, it's something that I think that the Broncos right now, Cody, they would get no compensatory picks if he does leave for a head coaching job, which nobody's going to scoff at that, right? If, if Ejiro gets a head coaching gig, but this is where the lateral move that we talked about comes into play. Would the Broncos let him do that? Because it would cost them potentially two third round picks to do that, to say, all right, yeah, our, our new head coach, doesn't necessarily want to move forward with your scheme or or you don't want to work with him or whatever the case may be it would be a sacrifice of potentially two third round picks that is something that i don't know if that's why i wonder did it come up in these negotiations like you mentioned it's been talked about with some of these candidates like what's your plan i i can't help but wonder if it's not a defensive oriented head coach coming in or even if it is i mean this is one of the big reasons i think it's draft capital george payton we know he loves those dart throws right so that's a big deal to me. Well, I think it should be a big deal for, for Broncos country as well. And, and look, Evro, as good of a coach as he is, I think it's important as well that we highlight some of the things that he's done well outside of you know being able to prime himself potentially for comp compensatory pick status. I, I feel like under him, right, what was one thing that you and I admired about Vic Fangio and Ed Donatel and that staff when they were here? They were really you know, good and emphasized player development. Ejiro Evero is the same exact way. And I feel like the defensive coaches that Evero had handpicked on his staff for the defensive side of the ball, I thought they really emphasized player development as well. We saw that clearly. Now, injuries, I think, forced some acceleration on some guys like Inyoma Uwazarike, who, you know, to be honest with you, for where he was at from a playing standpoint, he was kind of behind Matt Henningsen, who was a later round pick than him. But then towards the end of the year, we saw Nyomo Wazariki step up a little bit and get a little more playing time and, and show that I think he could play on this defensive line. And on top of that, I, I want to talk about cornerback specifically, right? When Ronald Darby went down with the ACL injury, I think we were all sitting there like, oh no, like what's going to happen with the Broncos at cornerback at this point of the season? Because week five, I mean, it was still pretty early on and you lose a guy like that for the entire year, it really forces you to evaluate how are things going to play out in that moment? Damari Mathis, who really, I think, had a meteoric rise in training camp ever since he had that undercut interception against Brett Rip. And I remember watching that play and thinking, wow, this kid has some special talent to him. I'm a cornerback guy. You know that. Damari Mathis lived up to the hype, lived up to the bill, and continued to grow week in and week out opposite of Patrick Sertan. I think guys like him, guys like Caden Stearns at safety, how well they played is important. And that also coincides with this next guy as well that I think is really Everett's right-hand man on the defensive side of the ball, and that's Christian Parker. Christian Parker, who's been tasked with developing a lot of guys that have been maybe the brightest spots for the Broncos the last couple of years, right? Notably, obviously, Pat Sertan, which we know, I mean, maybe could you put Pat Sertan on autopilot with his development, the way that he's driven and the way that he's just built different, maybe. But Christian Parker, I think, deserves his flowers for helping get him to the next level as well. But you look at guys like you mentioned, Damari Mathis. What about Caden Stearns making such an immediate impact for the Broncos, even as a rotational guy getting four interceptions in his first two seasons, Cody? 
when you factor in these couple of things here, especially given Isiro Evero's history of developing defensive backs. I remember when he was with the 49ers, the Rams, a lot of unsung players kind of came up through the ranks. I forget the guy's name, the free agent who signed Darius Williams, who signed with Jacksonville, came from nowhere and had a great time, a great couple of years with the Rams before signing in Jacksonville and making an impact there. So player development for these guys is a huge area of strength schematically though when you talk about uh remember that there was kind of a worry i guess from some of the reporters talking about well if D'Amico ryan's or dan quinn come in they're four three guys where is zero evero he's a three four guy so you'd have to either i mean let him go or change the scheme or both or whatever cody with with so many nfl teams spending time in nickel and dime you tell me i mean how big of a deal really is that when we're talking about the broncos current roster personnel the scheme that they would use as their base scheme, whether 4-3 or 3-4, that seemed to be a huge difference maker, I would say, back in, like, remember when they were hiring Josh McDaniels or John Fox? It was like, well, they run a 3-4, they run a 4-3. You have to draft certain ways for both. It kind of feels like the NFL is more positionless these days from my vantage point. But you tell me, how big of a deal is that in terms of the personnel and keeping a zero ever right now is that a is that a deal breaker? I guess for the Denver Broncos, you know, I think I think you have to preserve right. If it's not broken, don't fix it. I, I think we're seeing now, and especially in the AFC West, when you're playing teams like Kansas City, you're playing teams. Uh, we'll see what the Raiders look like and what direction they go at quarterback, but also the Kansas City Chiefs. You have to play in nickel and dime for the most part, and you have to have stout guys. That's why the three four really gives you, I would say, defensively with how the NFL offense is predicated today gives you the most positional versatility and defensive versatility to adjust to some of these offenses that they have. Because as we see, we see a lot of three-by-one. We see a lot of empty sets now in the NFL. We see a lot of motion uh, too empty. You have to have personnel to do that. Sometimes when you run the 4-3, I mean, you have to have the right personnel, I feel like, in the 4-3. But we're also seeing defenses transition to some nickel looks out of the 4-2-5, right? Four-down linemen. I mean, essentially, you could still call it almost kind of the 3-4 because – you know, instead of having defensive ends, you can have outside linebackers part of that four-two-five. Your interior guys, two linebackers, and the rest of the guys on the back end playing. The, you know, in the slot playing corner. I mean, your two high safety look. There's different things that you can do defensively, but I think that the three-four is really predicated to what the Broncos do well. And as we see, I mean, I think we saw this with the Philadelphia Eagles. Having athletic linebackers that can play on the outside of edge rusher, like Hassan Reddick. Remember in Arizona, they had him playing off-ball linebacker. They, you know, In Philadelphia, he moved to pass rusher, and it certainly has paid off. Baron Browning is a guy of that stature who, in his first season, played as an inside backer. He's now moved to edge rusher, and I think will start opposite of Randy Gregory going into next season. You have to preserve that, and I think it's just best suited for how the NFL has played on the offensive side of the ball. It gives you the best overall defense to be able to read and react and make plays. In my opinion, I think the Broncos have to preserve the scheme that they currently have. But if they do somehow get a coach that transitions their defensive scheme, I really wonder how it'll change some things. And I think that once we find out who the next head coach is, we'll be able to break things down. And once the press conference happens, I think that'll actually be a question – I may ask the next head coach about that and, and maybe how they kind of build their staff a little bit. To me, this is something I'm very intrigued at seeing. And Broncos country, as we continue to figure out this Broncos head coaching search, there are some news and notes going on around the league that you have to pay attention to as it pertains to other team situations and how it may impact the Broncos. We'll dive into that on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. And this year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. And we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sportsbook in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet, and you'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads and who will score a touchdown. Plus, the FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And best of all, you get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 
The Broncos head coaching search continues with no answer on who the next head coach will be just yet, but there is an expectation that more will come of the search this week. Potential finalists for the job, and heck, the Broncos might even hire their next head coach this week. That is the case that we are hoping for here on Lockdown Broncos. Thank you so much to Broncos Country for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. We have to take a look as well, right? While we're trying to figure out what's going on with the Broncos side of things on the head coaching search, you kind of have to pay attention to some of the other teams around the league that are in the same position that have not yet hired their next head coach. Obviously, some teams setting up interviews. And now that some teams have been eliminated from the postseason, especially AFC and NFC Championship weekend, we're now seeing some of those candidates receive some interview requests from around the league. So how might this impact the Broncos in their search for their next head coach? Well, I think it can give us kind of hints as to where we can start the process of elimination, right? With the Broncos top eight candidates and just knowing, okay, we talked about it on yesterday's show. It seems like is your Evero, Jim Caldwell, David Shaw, Raheem Morris. It seems like those guys are out of the running. So that's four out of the initial eight, Cody. Then you have Dan Quinn, who said he's going back to the Dallas Cowboys. That's five out of the initial eight. Then you have D'Amico Ryans, who appears to be getting hired as the next head coach of the Houston Texans. As of the time that we're recording this, Ian Rappaport reported that he's traveling to Houston potentially Monday afternoon, could finalize a deal by Tuesday or Wednesday, according to Rap Sheet. So we'll see what that happens there. But that would be six out of the eight candidates, right? Unless I'm counting wrong, Cody. So that would leave on the table of the guys the Broncos have interviewed. That would leave Sean Payton and Jim Harbaugh. And that le- that. I don't know where to go with that, Cody. I'm just saying that's those are the things that we've been told at this point. Those are the things that have been reported up to this point. There's there's three job openings left if you consider the Texans a done deal. That would be the Broncos, the Cardinals, and the Colts. We have no idea what the Colts are doing. The Cardinals have reopened their search. Could the Broncos do the same? I know we talked about that before, but like you said, a couple of coordinators from teams that lost on championship weekend now getting some love from other teams. Well, and on top of that, too, you know, I think we see guys like defensive coordinator for the Bengals. Lou Anarumo, I think, has done a fantastic job with that defense in Cincinnati the last few years. I mean, he's really kind of been this unsung hero for them. I mean, you you see Bengals fans tweeting about him like, oh, we hope we don't lose Lou. And he's getting a lot of praise now. And the Cardinals have requested to interview him. Obviously, we talked about it on yesterday's episode of the show. Brian Callahan, who has some former ties to Peyton Manning, the Denver Broncos at one point in time. He's also, you know, been requested to be interviewed by the Cardinals. So we even expanded on Denver could possibly reopen their search. But, I mean... As you said, our good friend Mike Cliss said that the Broncos' approach, from what he knows, is firm on the initial eight that they had focused on initially. So I, at this point, we don't know what to believe. And there's also been reports that the Broncos are entirely out on Sean Payton. So really, we just have to wait and see what happens. And I feel like that's the important thing, right? Because we can speculate you know, who we think will be the coach, who we think should be the coach. I know a lot of fans have their preference on who they want as the head coach. But I think we just have to sit back and let the facts kind of play themselves out here and determine, you know, what happens. And when it happens, we're going to tell you why it's important. We're not going to get into the whole speculation about what if this guy is the head coach. I I think it's super important to note there. But at this point, as we speak right now, with no move currently in the process of happening as the time that we're recording this, part of me wonders, will the Broncos, like I said, go back to Jim Harbaugh For that third swing, we talk about the big swing, right? You talk about the two strikes initially. Will they make a final swing here to try to hit a home run with Jim Harbaugh? I think for many people in Broncos country, they would love for that to happen. But right now, it seems like that's probably going to be the reality that Denver's going to do that. It does. It feels that way. It feels like not. It doesn't necessarily feel like circling back to me either, Cody. I think that they went through the interview process. Again, the perception right now is the reality for so many people. And the problem is, is that everybody's kind of creating their own perception of what's going on out there or what's really happening behind the scenes. I know it's causing a lot of tension in Broncos country, but I I wouldn't say that the team is like circling back to Jim Harbaugh and begging him to be their coach. I think that they're going through this process and maybe they're trying to get him to be the head coach. Maybe they're trying harder, but what do we know about Jim Harbaugh? What have we been reading? The guy wants to be courted. The guy wants to be pursued. He wants to be wine and dine. He wants all this, that, and the other. 
And I'm, I'm fine with that. Look, the theatrics of this whole thing, I don't care. Cody, the Broncos are going to hire a head coach. Whoever it becomes, you know, ends up being, I, I don't know exactly what kind of you know optics it's going to be from the fans perspective but what we do know is this we do know that the broncos have taken some big swings we we know they jumped through the hoops for sean payton we know they've been jumping through hoops to try after jim harbaugh i think if nothing else it, that's admirable but once again they failed to to get a guy like frank reich in the building they didn't reach out to shane steichen there's so many other things that you could gripe about with this head coaching search that if they don't land jim harbaugh or sean payton then I think it does look bad for the team. We'll see what happens as of Monday, as of the time that we're recording. No new rumors about the Bron surprise, surprise. No new rumors about the Broncos head coaching search. They're keeping things tight lipped. I guess we just have to ride this wave, don't we? And I suppose on the next episode of Lockdown Broncos, <laughs> you'll know exactly what's going on as far as what happened on Monday. Because it seems like, you know, when we close out, Cody, it seems like when we close out an episode, something happens, something tends to happen. So, We'll, we'll find out, but you know what? I'm excited. I like the process. I like the fact that we get to kind of talk and speculate every day. It makes it fun for us. Makes it fun, I think, for the people that are listening and just enjoying the process. So let's do our best to enjoy it. Trust the process applying to the Denver Broncos? Who would have thought that would be the reality in which we're at right now? I, I want to throw one more thing out here that simply wouldn't shock me at any point in time. I, I think it's unorthodox. I don't think you see many teams ever embrace something like this. But let's say that the Broncos don't want Sean Payton, right? Let's say that they're truly out on him. And let's say that Jim Harbaugh truly doesn't want to come coach in the NFL. Let's say that that's the reality. Part of me wouldn't be shocked if the Broncos do go back to Jerry Rossberg. Now, I think it's important. A lot of people were, were freaking out because it said that his contract was terminated. His contract ended procedurally at the end of the year. It expired. So that's why that whole thing came out initially that people were reacting to. I still think that there is a chance that if everything falls through, I think Jerry Rossberg kind of gets the helm to lead the team for a year. And then maybe it, maybe Ezero Evero is ready at that point. And maybe you promote Evero from within as the next head coach, or maybe there's other candidates that do become available, or maybe, Hey, maybe they revisit Sean Payton next year. If he does go back to Fox and is not coming out of there, but there's also some other situations you have to follow. I would not be shocked if Jerry Rosberg suddenly emerges. If, if all things kind of fall to the wayside for Broncos ownership in this head coaching search. But one thing is Sarah mentioned, we'll have you covered every step of the way here until the Broncos announce their next head coach. We'll dive into every news nugget and information that we get. And we'll break it down here with you, the avid listeners in Broncos country here on the lockdown Broncos podcast. We'll see you tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show.